And I'm joined now by Scott Sampson. He is a paleontologist and an evolutionary biologist, and also he is GSA's winner of this year's Public Service Award. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here with us. Let's go ahead and start off about uh, the work you've been doing, which really talks about the human and nature divide that's been going on with so much technology and all of us wrapped up in our devices. Well, yeah, I mean, there's been a revolution in childhood that most people don't recognize, and it's only been in the past generation. So kids today spend an average of four to seven minutes outdoors each day, which is 90% less than their parents. And indoors, they're looking at screens seven to 10 hours a day. And some of the health ramifications of this include skyrocketing rates of obesity, attention deficit so disorder, diabetes, depression. So one of the solutions is getting kids outside. Another one is getting them inspired to be outside, getting them inspired about nature. And so that's what I'm really trying to do. Is getting people more attached to nature, really, and, and connecting in some way to the earth sciences and understanding what's around us, right? Why is that so important? Well, I think for a long time, scientists have fallen into the same trap as environmentalists, where we thought, we thought that if we just give people information, if they only understood about species extinction or global warming, they would change their behavior. But it turns out that's not the case. It really is the heart, not the head, that drives behavior change. So we have to appeal to, pe to people's emotions. And the way to do that is to get them outside, experience the places that they live firsthand and giving them new eyes with which to see that world that they see every day. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. As an educator and a scientist, what are you doing? How do you engage people? How do you get them to put their cell phone away for even a few minutes? How are you doing that? Yeah, I think there's two broad ways of doing it. I call them ecology and evolution. Ecology in the sense of how things are connected at any moment in time. Where does your food come from? Where does your energy come from? Where do your wastes go? And then there's the vertical line of the story that we have that brought us here. Most of us today in Western culture have no story that roots us in the place that they live. And geology and astronomy and all these sciences help to provide this grand narrative, this cosmic story that is the story of all of us. And yet we don't teach it in school or museums or most of us don't even know it as well. And so I think that's one of the things that geoscientists could really have a great contribution in. And you gave a, a speech on this, a lecture at the uh, conference here just a few days ago. Do you see now that you're raising awareness about this and you've published this information on this, do you see it now expanding to other scientists? What kind of feedback are you getting? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm a paleontologist and earth scientist by training. I now spend much of my time educating other folks and talking to them about the natural world, and it is starting to make a difference. This show that I do on PBS Kids, Dinosaur Train, is about getting to little kids. I speak to adults all the time. I'm writing a popular book right now, a general audience book on how people connect with nature and how that changes through um, development from toddlerhood to adulthood. So I think these things are starting to make a difference, and most important of all, people are starting to realize that we need to embrace both technology and nature. We're not arguing to go back and turn off all the iPhones forever. We're just looking for some balance. So we need to get those kids out there doing that. And parents and caregivers are starting to realize that this, this is critical in the same way that we know that reading to our children makes a huge difference in their language capacities. We're now starting to realize that that time spent playing outdoors is equally critical to a healthy development. Mm -hmm. Well, as a parent of two adolescent boys, thank you for this research because it really is insightful and I think so many parents wonder, what are we going to do with these kids? So I think it's been very helpful and, and uh, informational. So thank you for that. Congratulations thank on the award. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Scott Sampson, thanks for being here with us.